Because today, so that we don't, we can go ahead and um, finish early. Today is all about the institution of political parties, specifically American political parties, because political parties in other countries, they don't behave the way American political parties do behave. Um, in the United States, we have many different political parties, but we do have two of the most dominant ones, the Republican Party, represented by an elephant, and the Democratic Party, represented by a donkey and the color blue. So let's give you a definition. A political party is a group of people with similar political values and policy goals. A group of people with similar political values and policy goals. A lot of you in this class will become a member of a political party when you grow up. But here's the key. The key is the goal of these political parties is to control the government. They want to be government. They want to be the ones that are calling the shots, making the laws, creating the, the policies, and making the decisions. So they want to control government. So here's a question. How do you control government? How do you be government? What's happening tomorrow? Elections. You have an election tomorrow, right? So if these political parties want to be the ones that make the decisions, what do they have to do? They have to win as many of those elections as they can, put their own members in positions of power so that they're the ones making the decisions. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. I need the following student to the front office, Sofia Arellano. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, so again, they try to control the government by winning elections. Republicans and Democrats tomorrow are going to compete for every single seat in American government, in the Texas government, and in the federal government. And their goal is to try to win as many elections as possible so that they're the ones making decisions and calling the shots. All right. In order to do that, political parties do the following things. Number one, they nominate candidates for office. They nominate candidates for office. They're the ones that recruit and choose which of their members are going to be run by for every position. So what do I mean by nominating candidates? On the board are all the Democrats in 2020 that wanted to be the next president of the United States in 2020. The job of the Democratic Party is to narrow down this list of candidates into how many candidates the Democratic Party, the goal is to narrow it down to just one. Who did they eventually choose at the very end? Joe Biden was the Democratic nominee. The Republican Party will do the same thing, and in 2020, who did they nominate for president? Donald Trump. So these two will face each other in the actual election determine who's going to be the next president of the United States. But each party, from their list of candidates, they have to narrow it down to one person that they're going to nominate. A nomination means that you're getting your party's official endorsement. Your party's official endorsement. It means that the political party will put all their resources, they will put all their bet on that one person and help him win the election. They don't only do this for the president, they do this for every single office in American government and in the Texas government as well. Tomorrow, senators and House of Representative members' seats are going to be up for grabs and Republicans and Democrats are going to be vying to win those elections. So from the lowest of positions like becoming your city's official dog catcher to the highest position in the United States, which would be the presidency of the United States, this is what political parties have to do. They have to narrow down their list of candidates into one person that they're going to nominate. After they nominate that person, the work is not done yet. Ask Donald Trump, right? He was nominated by the Republican Party, but he didn't get the presidency in 2020. The job of the political party is to help that nominee win their election. That's their job. To beat the other party's nominee. So they help nominees win their elections. How do they do that? by raising money for them. Money is very important in today's politics. And if you don't have enough money, you're not going to be able to run your campaign very well. So they help their nominees 
win their elections by fundraising for them. And this is probably the most important thing that political parties do for us as voters. They help inform the voters about their candidates. If they want to convince us to vote for their candidates, it might be a good idea to inform the voters what their candidates are about. Why voting for their candidates is a good idea. Right now, this is the job of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. Inform you about the nominees that are running for governor, the running for House of Representative member, the Texas government, um, so that we can make a good decision when it comes to voting tomorrow. To help inform the voters, each party has what we call a party platform. A party platform outlines the values and the goals of the party. The party platform outlines the values and the goals of the party. It tells us if you select this party, if you put them in power, what are they going to try to accomplish? What are their goals of the party? What are the values of the political party? Those of you who are smart in my class, this is a party platform of one of the major political parties in the United States. So it's either the Republican Party or the Democratic Party platform. Whose platform is this? Whose goals or values are indicated here? The Republican Party or the Democratic Party platform? Which party subscribe to faith and family values? The Republicans or the Democrats? You know? The Republicans. This is the Republican Party platform. It tells you these are the things that the Republican Party are, stands for and what they want to accomplish. If you put them in power, these are the things that you can expect to happen in American government. Any questions? So why does that help you? Because guys, I know most of you love your t-shirt. I know most of you are lazy, right? There's dozens and dozens of candidates running for office. Most of you are not going to research every single individual running for office. So to simplify things, Here's what you should do, those of you that are going to be voting tomorrow. You should go online, look up the Democratic Party platform, and then look up the Republican Party platform, and then evaluate which of the platforms do you agree with more. If you think the Republican platform is a good idea, then tomorrow, who do you vote for? Republican candidates, Republican governors, Republican House of Representative members, Republican senators, because when they're put in government, they're going to be more likely to make decisions that you agree with. But if you support the Democratic Party platform, then you vote Democrat. It kind of simplifies the choice for you so that you don't have to research every single individual that are running for office. Any questions? All right, let's talk about the party platform for each one. Are Democrats usually liberals or conservatives? We talked about this before. They're usually liberals. So the political ideology that Democrats subscribe to is usually liberalism. So if you're a liberal, you can find a home in the Democratic Party because you're going to be surrounded by people who are also liberal. You're going to be voting for people who are also liberal like you. Now, Republicans are usually conservative. There's some exceptions to that for both parties, but for the most part, most Republicans are conservatives. So here's the trick, guys. Most of you here know what liberalism and conservatism are about because we went over them, right? If you know what liberalism is and conservatism is, you know the party platform for each party. Because everything in the Democratic Party platform is about liberalism. And everything on the Republican Party platform is conservative values and conservative beliefs. The Republican Party, they prefer a smaller government, while the Democratic Party, they prefer a more powerful government. Now let's do this together, guys. Which ideology, liberal or conservative, supports gay marriage? Liberal. Liberals. Which means, which party supports gay marriage? Democrats. Democrats. Very good. So who would support abortion rights, Democrats or Republicans? Democrats. Democrats. Who would support government regulations of businesses, Democrats or Republicans? Probably Democrats. Who likes lower taxes, Democrats or Republicans? Republicans. Conservatives like lower taxes, and Republicans are conservatives. Who supports welfare programs like food stamps and Medicare? Democrats. Democrats do. Who supports a more powerful military and the police? Republicans. Republicans. Now I'm good with that? 
every four years during a presidential election year. What's the last time we had a presidential election? What year? 2020. When's the next time? 2020. 2020 was the last time. The next time will be two years from now in 2024. Each party will have this week-long celebration called the National Party Convention. It's like a pep rally that you guys do every Friday, but it's a week long. There's like balloons and special guests. At the end of the National Convention, this takes place in the summer of that year before the presidential election happens. At the end of that week long celebration, each party, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, the most important thing that happens at the end of that convention is they announce their presidential nominee, who they're going to support to be the next president of the United States. So here's a question. Here's an example of a national convention. Whose national convention was this? Was this the Republican one or the Democratic one? It's the Republican one because this is when who was nominated by the Republican Party to be president? Trump. After the convention, the work is not done yet. You still need to beat the other guy. You still need to beat the other party's nominee and become president of the United States. So the most important thing that happens during the national convention is the party nominees are officially announced. The party officially chooses who's going to, who are they going to run for president that year. And then the party platform is developed. They kind of tinker with the party platform every four years. So the party platform kind of gets developed more. All right. But here's the question. Some of you may be interested in becoming Republicans. Some of you may be interested in becoming Democrats. The question is, how do you become part of an American political party? In other countries, to become part of a political party, it's a little bit more complicated. It's like joining a club. So you need to pay monthly dues. You need to get a membership card. You need to officially register to that political party. In the United States, the process is a little simpler. All you need to do is claim to be one. That's what I want you to write down. Claim to be one. If, you're, if you think you're a Democrat, then congratulations, you're already part of the Democratic Party. If you think you're a Republican, congratulations, you're already part of the Republican Party. You don't need membership dues, you don't need to go to weekly meetings, you don't need to register officially. As long as you claim to be one, you already are one. Party identification is the party that an, indiv that an individual identifies with, that he labels himself as. So the, the party that an individual identifies with. So if you vote Democrat, your party identification is Democrat, so, so, uh, so on with the Republicans. Some of you might be asking yourself, Mr. Bautista, I don't really like both parties. Well, you're not alone. Most Americans actually are not Republican or Democrat. There are more people that they call themselves independent than Democrats or Republicans. What's an independent? Well, they call them independents because they're not loyal to a what? They're not loyal to a particular political party. They don't label themselves as Republicans. They don't label themselves as Democrats. When they go to a voting booth, sometimes they vote Republican, sometimes they vote Democrat. Most Americans are like that, close to 50% of all Americans in the United States. They don't label themselves as Democrats. They don't label themselves as Republicans. I guarantee you, most of you that listen to the radio and watch TV um, for the last couple of weeks, you've seen ads about candidates, right, running for office, like Mr. Vallejo or something like that. Um, who are those ads for? They're not for the Republicans or the Democratic voters because they already know who they're going to vote for. Those ads is to appeal to the independents, the people that don't know who they're going to vote for tomorrow. So this is called, by the way, more and more as the years go by, more and more Americans are losing their party identification. They're letting go of their loyalty to the Democratic Party or to the Republican Party, and more and more Americans are identifying as independent. This is called party de-alignment. When individuals lose their party identification, when they let go, when they're not loyal to a particular political party anymore. Some of you are probably gonna be that way when you grow up. All right, why do we care about political parties? Because whichever party you guys choose to elect and give control of government to, they're the ones that are going to be making the policies. They're the ones that are going to be making the 
decisions. If tomorrow you give control to the Republican Party, then you can expect conservative policies to be passed through the government. If you do it for the Democratic Party, liberal policies going through the government. So whichever party you guys put in control gets to create the policies. They, make, they get to make the decisions. For the Texas government, also for the federal government as well. You should know, guys, right now, the Texas government is controlled by the Republican Party. So the Texas government is more likely to make conservative decisions. The U.S. government, right now, is mostly controlled by the Democratic Party. Our president is a Democrat, and both houses of Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate, has a Democratic majority, very slightly, but the Democrats have more members in both houses of Congress, which means the Democrats usually get what they want today. The laws that they want usually pass. The Republicans have a hard time getting an input. Tomorrow, all of this can change. The Republican Party can get more members than the Democratic Party tomorrow, which means the Republicans will get more of what they want. I'll tell you what the prediction are based on the polls. Based on the polls, tomorrow, because of the election tomorrow, the Republican Party will take control of both the House of Representatives and they will probably take control of the Senate as well. Which means we're going to have what we call a divided government. Or the executive branch, who's our executive? Who's the president right now? Joe Biden. What party does he belong to? The Democratic Party. Right now, we have a legislative branch, House of Representatives and the Senate, that's controlled by the Democrats. But tomorrow, according to the polls, they're probably going to be under the control of the Republican Party. When that happens, does it get harder to make decisions or does it get easier to make decisions in the, the U.S. government? Or it gets harder. If both branches of government, the executive branch and the legislative branch, don't get along, then it's going to be harder to make laws. It's going to be harder to make decisions. Right now, the Democrats have a very easy time making laws because both the presidency and Congress kind of agree with one another. They have the same goals. They have the same values. But tomorrow, if the polls are right, if the polls are true, then for the next two years, our government is, you can expect the government to not work as well as it used to because the two branches of government are going to have different goals and they're going to have different values now. Alright, so if different parties control different branches of government, it becomes harder to make policies. It becomes harder to make decisions. That's called a divided government. Tomorrow, more than likely, we're going to get a divided government for the next two years. All right, we'll talk about third parties tomorrow. Did I miss anything? Make sure you keep these. We're not done with these. Did I miss anything? All right, let's do...